Welcome to the Take a Listing Today podcast, where our hosts, Jim Studebaker and Todd Robertson, give you strategies to get you out of the office right now so you can take a new listing today. And now, here's Jim and Todd. Here we are once again. We made it through last week's show and they have us back for this week as well. I'm Jim and there's Todd. And our wonderful producer and in her VIP suite corner, the wonderful Lisa oh. Gray. Hi, I was itching my eye, but here I'm back now. Hi. Hi. Hello. It's like you were taking a nap over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just allergies, allergies. Ah. Is it the meditation room after the podcast? <laughs> yes, it is. I. How did you know that? meditate oh. here she's meditating during the podcast actually yes, so <laughs> yes you've noticed that yes well, i actually paint eyeballs on my eyelids so you can't tell that's a brilliant oh. idea actually <laughs> hmm. she's See, more creative than we thought lisa's got some smarts over there yeah, i know it took years yeah well <laughs> thank you for joining us today for show number 178 who knew we would make it here so quickly? Wow, and this is a great, it is and a great topic today and very timely, very timely. From good to great, tips to boost your listing presentation and negotiation game. I love this topic. Um, there couldn't be better timing for this topic. I Thank think. you. I think they're really going to enjoy this this episode if they're paying attention and taking notes, really. All right. So pay attention, turn off the distractions and listen. With the NAR settlement on everyone's minds, specifically those of potential buyers and sellers, now it's more important than ever to make sure your real estate agent skills shine. The following are some tips to help enhance your listing presentation and your negotiation skills and to raise the bar in your overall expertise. Are you ready and for Jim, this? Yes, we are. And Jim, didn't we read a book years ago called Good to Great by we Jim did. Collins? We, we did. did. Very Good interesting to great. book. Yeah. Yes. So before going into all this, I just want to share with the agents and brokers listening right now, the whole concept of the book, we're going to save you $29.95 yeah. and tell you <laughs> the whole concept in 10 funny. seconds. It's so nice of um, you, Todd. The concept is that good is the enemy of great. So, so let's say somebody, oh, how's your physical health? Well, I'm doing good, not excellent or outstanding. So good keeps you in that comfort. Oh, how's your real estate going? Good. Well, that's the enemy of great because you right. don't you don't have that something that drive yeah. that drives something to really propel you. That's exactly right. That's a great book. Go find it on Amazon. Jim Collins. Good yeah. to great. And read the hedgehog concept. That was the right term, right? Yes. I know. Yes. I was yes. thinking, I was trying to remember that now. And hedgehog. I got to be honest, I have a great short term memory, but I don't remember what the concept was. I remember the term though. Yeah. Well, you're Do you guys write... remember the concept. Well, I'm not going to spoil it for everybody. Oh, come on. Right. I'm not going to. No. If we spoil it, you're not going to read the book. The exactly. book is enjoyable. Go, go buy the book. You could probably Google it and get it for free for those. Go, who, on, you, go who are, on YouTube and get the book summary. There, there you go. There you go. Uh, All right. So let's find out how you can get from good to great. How about your negotiation skills, enhancing those? Here's the first way to do that. Continuous learning. Avoid. I'm sorry. Not avoid. Attend. That's two, two different words there. Attend negotiation oh. workshops, seminars, or online courses to learn advanced negotiation techniques. How about yeah, I, lo I love number one because that has mm -hmm. to happen. I mean, when a person gets to the point where they think they've arrived, somebody else hungrier and, and remains a student is going to pass you up. We see it in every industry that you have to remain a student of life and have yeah. to pivot with the economy, with the times. And mm -hmm. you know what? There's no excuse not to do this. Number one, type in negotiation workshops on Google. You will be astounded how many there are <laughs> online, oh. in person, um, through through Udemy or some of those. Um, <clears throat> you know, oh. there's those those module type uh, companies that offer all kinds of courses and different yep. subjects. A bunch of those had courses on it. You don't want to spend that money, which some of those places I think it's twenty dollars to take some of their online workshops super cheap but okay you could buy a book you could read a book on your kindle that's even cheaper mm -hmm. you could listen to something on audible you can actually through the library rent books that are in auditory format for free or go to the library and pick up a book and read it for free there is no excuse not to hone the skill there's a million ways to do it maybe not a million but you know what i mean literally you mean an audiobook um to do to to improve your negotiation skills there's so many avenues to get there to improve those skills, whether it's a workshop online or it's a book or it's an audio book or it's an ebook or it's a 
um, some one of those modules through Udemy or one of those companies or through YouTube. I bet you could go into YouTube and type in how to improve negotiation skills and find a gazillion different um, YouTube videos on that. There's what I'm saying Absolutely. is there's a lot of avenues to improving that. Mm -hmm. At one time, that would not be true. Twenty years ago, you might struggle to find some way, right. some kind of program. There's a lot of options. Do it. Read them. Listen to them. Watch them. I bet you'll get a tidbit here and there. And here's something you can do, which coincidentally is also item number two. How about some role playing exercises? Right. Practice your negotiation scenarios with colleagues or mentors to refine your negotiation strategies and responses. This one's so fascinating to me because this one will make you sharper than anybody in your board of realtors. But most agents, most people find that as fourth grade. Oh, that's dumb. I'm not going to do that. But I guarantee you, and I'm on Facebook with a ton of agents all over the country. They they will role play for a half hour every morning, regardless of, of their you know, if they're a, a 50 year cl uh, closing, 80, 100. So the whole reason for that is to get the marbles out. They know what right. to say, but that they want to make it unconscious. <laughs> right, and, and right. If, if, you're, if you're role playing times 500, when you get to the kitchen table, you're not going to be squirming when they give right. you a, weir a weird objection. Right. I mean, what does the military do? What do firefighters do? What do the what does the police force do? They right. they train you, train you, train you, train you. So when you get into the scenario, the situation, you just respond. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's just yep. a, a, a you don't even think about it. You respond, and that's all you're doing with this. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking about uh, Chat GPT and some of these AIs. They've changed the way you can learn foreign languages now, where you can actually speak into Chat GPT, and really? yeah, they have apps now that will actually give you a full immersive experience of that language where you're not just saying, how do I go to the restaurant? It's not something like that. It's actually a real conversation. You can set it to different levels, beginner level, intermediate, advanced on different topics and, and really hone your foreign language skills. And I was thinking, I bet you, because I know with ChatGPT, you can talk to it instead of typing. Oh. There would be a way that you could say, Pretend you are a homeowner Clever. and I'm trying to sell you my services as a real estate agent. Give me objections that I can overcome with you and let's have a conversation. And I bet you any money, I'm going to test that now, that you could get a dialogue yeah. going with ChatGPT because it, it does the same thing with foreign language. Why wouldn't it do it in this situation? Let's test that and report back next yes, week. Yes, yes. I, I like it. Works. I like it because that would yep. just be another way <laughs> right. to do it, you know? Totally, right. yep. All right. Another way to enhance your negotiation skills are to know your local market stats and your market trends. Stay updated on the trends, comparable sales data and local market conditions to leverage information during negotiations. And you're going to come out there looking like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Go ahead, Todd. What I think is nice about this is is this is not going to take you hours. It's not going to it's not going to overwhelm you, but get to the point where you know four or five bullet points of market stats in your market. That could be your elevator pitch. That could mm -hmm. be if you're at a restaurant, someone says, how's the market? You know, four or five bullet points. So get tight at that because your average agent is not going to. Well, and what I think would really do you a service is if you're in a listing presentation. So we're just talking about the negotiation, let's say, with the homeowner, right? Not the negotiation yeah. with the home buyer. So right now, I'm, I mean, we're talking about both, but right now in this scenario, I'm talking about the home owner trying to get them to sign your listing agreement. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Let's say you show up and you happen to know the last four homes that sold in the area that are similar to theirs. You've got that memory or you've got that um, ingrained in your memory, the size of the home, all the details about the home and what it sold for. And now you've got the homeowner talking about, well, I want to list, but I want to list for such and such amount. And you know that that's an overprice of, say, 50000 or more. Now you can come back and look so knowledgeable and talk about, OK, well, I understand why you would like to do this. Let me give you an uh, just give you a review of what's been happening in your area. So you had a home same year as yours, same size, and it sold for this amount. Then you've got another one that sold three weeks ago. Again, around the same size, same year, uh, same amenities, and it sold for 10000 less than the price I'm saying would be a good price for you. You know, if you come in with stats like that, you are so credible. You're really backing. Instead of just saying, no, 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 that's too much. Let's go at this price. Now you've possibly offended the homeowner. Now they're just turned off by you. They don't believe you. They think you're just wanting to get a quick right. sale. And they're maybe going to choose somebody else who's saying yes to that 50000 more not understanding that there's a credible reason 
why that is not going to work for them. So this is a bit of negotiation right there that you're doing. You've got to come in empowered and have information to help you there. Very well, true. And and an add on to what you just said, if if another agent does take that because they're not negotiating as well, and it is twenty or fifty thousand overpriced, the other realtors are going to use that for contrast to sell the right. other properties. Right. So we see that in every market all the time right you're not helping your customer but their trust with you isn't real high yet they've just met you so you've got to you've got to do things to help increase the level of trust and statistics and facts that builds trust everybody believes that when they hear a stat or they see something in writing or a you know a fact that builds Builds trust. It does. It does. The other thing that will help you out with your negotiation skills is some active listening. Mm -hmm. Improve your active listening skills to understand your client's needs, concerns, and priorities better during the negotiations. Very smart. Yeah. What's one of the biggest rules of selling is to know when to zip it. And I think right. it, sales people in general have such great personalities. They're so gregarious and they're such so charming and great talkers that there's a point very often in the sale where they've got it. They've got the sale, whether it's with the buyer, whether it's with the homeowner, they've sold them, they're in, they have it. And they're not listening because they're thinking more about the next thing they want to say, or now I'm going to try and get them this way or come, overcome an objection this way. And they've already made the sale, but because they're not listening, actively listening, they keep talking. And very often they talk that person right out of their decision right. that they had made yeah. a few minutes earlier. Actually, there's a great book. So how do we've read this? How to become a rainmaker? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, right. Have you read that one, Lisa? I we think have. I have. That's that's kind of old, isn't that? Yeah. What are you saying? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey J. Fox. I don't remember is the a lot of that, about but, it. But, that's what I'm saying. But his but one of his sayings is, uh, if you spent two hours making up a presentation that's going to be a long presentation, and two minutes into it, the buyer says he'll buy, then stop talking. Right. Sign the contract right. and leave. Right. Well, and and another thing is is that. A lot of great agents out there, their listing presentation is simply asking questions. And if they're l listening, they're going to find out what oh, they need everything. to do to get that listing. Everything. That is everything. They give you so, the objections when they answer right. the questions. Yeah. If you ask open-ended the right questions, you get mm -hmm. everything you need to close that sale. Always, whether it's a buyer or a homeowner, you're going to get it right there. But boy, you better listen or you're mm -hmm. going to miss the boat on that. All right. Finally, in your negotiation expertise Creative solutions. Develop creative solutions to address challenging negotiation situations and find win-win outcomes for all parties involved. And that's what you want is win-win for everybody. Right, right. Think out of the box. All right. right. There's going to be there's going to be challenges in a lot of real estate transactions. Or I want to list, but this has to happen. But if 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 you show up with compassion, with em empathy, and listen, you'll be able to help them mm -hmm. overcome those speed bumps that that might be present. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. So we talked about negotiation skills enhancement. How about your listing presentation skills? Could that use a little help? Well, here mm -hmm. are five topics to help you with your listing presentation. Number one, how about some professional development? Attend workshops or training sessions specifically focused on listing presentations to enhance your presentation skills. Again, this is just what we talked about with the, the negotiation skills. Type that into Google. You'll see a ton of different workshops online through diff those different module companies. You can go to YouTube, find stuff. You can go to podcasts, find a bunch of podcasts on the topic. So there's an endless amount of ways that you can get information on how to improve your listing presentation. You may feel like, been there, done that. I know it all. I've learned it all. I've been in this industry 30 years. But there's always something either new that you can learn or something you can relearn or be reminded of. So don't get closed-minded where you think you know it all. This is all just meant to re-inspire you. Often that's all you need is to listen to a book and go, oh my gosh, I remember when I used to do that. That oh. And you get excited mm -hmm. again, right? Because right, you're right, doing something right. new. Absolutely. And I think this topic right here is everything. Here's the reason why. Um, like last week we talked about maybe some agents are paralyzed because of what's going on with NAR. But think about this, if, if a real estate agent, and we discussed this a few times in our shows, um, imagine if you let everything else go and you spent three days or one week just getting great at your listing presentation, great mm -hmm. at overcoming objections, where you had a relaxed sense of confidence. Well, guess what? 
you're going to be more excited to prospect, mm -hmm. which people hate because you know right. what to do and what to say. So right. this right here is everything. Yeah, it is. I agree with you. It's the hardest part, I think, for probably most human beings is to overcome that being right. in that situation that feels a little bit um, confrontational, although it isn't. You're trying to help shouldn't somebody. Be. You shouldn't look right. at it that you're pushing. I think a lot of people misunderstand sales as I'm pushing them. No, you're actually problem solving for them. You're helping them. And if you get really good at explaining why this is a great solution to their problem, selling their home with me or buying this home from the homeowner, then you've solved problems and you've helped people have a better life. That's what you're doing. That's yes, what you're doing. Exactly Stay focused right. on that. Exactly. And when you're in there telling them how you are helping them out, how about customizing your listing presentation? Taylor your presentation to each client's unique needs, preferences, and property characteristics to demonstrate your personalized value. Really, you have to do that. Otherwise, you're just showing up and doing, you know, in their minds, oh, they're just going through the motions. But yeah, you can personalize it. You can have a photo of their house um, on, on the front of it. You could do that very easy. Um, but make it personalize just to them because right then that half hour or 15 minutes or two hours is the most important time right when you leave probably not going back yeah i mean think of a couple open-ended questions you can ask before the presentation that really will define them and what's important to them in a way that might be unique um and you you, sh you should be the pro at knowing what those questions are that will really dig and get that kind of unique information and then show up that you show up with a presentation that demonstrates that you were listening. You heard them over the phone, you get exactly. it, you remembered what they said, and you are there to deliver it. And they will be wowed by that. They will be wowed. And they will be wowed by your visual enhancements that you're going to have, Ooh. which is number three. Incorporate some high quality visuals, such as professional photography, virtual tours, and staging to showcase properties effectively during presentations. Floyd Wickman, one of our great friends, um, had a saying about that. And, and here's what he said, and this ties into the listing presentation. He said, never tell somebody something you can show them because a mm -hmm. picture's worth a thousand dollars. Dollars. Yeah. So as, op as opposed to just talking about it, yep. you're supporting it with paperwork, with graphs, with charts. So... Right. There's magic in that because if, if that's how they need to be sold, you, you, you don't know their strategy yet. Are they visual? Are they right? So well, get get on the MLS and point out. Okay, here's here's one of my homes. Look at the photography mm -hmm. and flip through it right. and show them and explain. Do you see the angles I'm using? Do you see the colors? Do you see how I enhance this room with digital AI? Because you know we wanted to show the the potential home buyer what the potential is of that room, and you couldn't really see it without that enhancement, then show them homes that have not done that. Now look at the difference. It's going to be a stark here's, difference. Right. Yeah. Here's a bunch of homes on the MLS that have not done that. What do you think about those? Which home would you be more interested in buying? Show them the difference because you're right. You can tell them all day, well, I do this, I do this. That means if somebody said to me, I digitally enhance a room with AI, <laughs> I mean, well, I know what that what is. is. That? But many yeah, people would look right. at that and glaze over. Right. So show them, show them the virtual tool, uh, virtual tour tool that they can actually feel like they're walking through the room. If tour they're out tool. of state, yeah, a tour tool. <laughs> I know that was a tongue twister. <laughs> seashells, seashells by the seashore or whatever. Yeah, that was one of those tour tool, tour tool. Tour but tool. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. then it, they can feel like they're walking right through the home. And this is great for out of state buyers, right? They can't be there. And I know many people have bought a home without even being in the state. So it does happen. Right, so right. you're, you know, you've got to show them, show them the things that you do. If you stage professionally, show them the examples of it. They've got to see it. Now, speaking of Floyd Wickman, he is a master storyteller. So he certainly knows number four, compelling storytelling. Master the Ooh. art of storytelling to captivate clients' attention and highlight the unique selling points and features of the property. I love that. And there's a lot of ways you can use that. So let's say they tell you uh, their situation. Um, you know, my husband just got a job and we need to do this. So storytelling is great because you can use an example of what you do with other clients and how you help them become successful. Um, so storytelling captivates people. It puts them in a trance. Tony Robbins talked about Colin Powell years ago. He said, why was Colin Powell 
such an in-demand speaker. All he did was tell stories that made mm -hmm. people feel good about being American. Look at mm -hmm. look at the you book know? series Chicken Soup for the Soul. I think that series oh. was written for about 30 different topics over the years and Mark was translated to 30 different languages around the world. And all it was was stories, just feel yeah. good stories. And they they wrote it for seniors. Then they wrote a version of it for teenagers then for new mothers. And it was just stories, stories, stories. I mean, somebody wasn't sitting there and writing all these books. They were just compiling stories. Stories are captivating. They make you feel not so alone because what we find out the more stories we hear is we are not alone. We're all experiencing right. the same types of things. It unifies you. So this well is probably my favorite point of all of the points in here. Storytelling is amazing and we all love a good story. Tomorrow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And finally, if you want to really enhance your listing presentation, how about some education? Educate your clients about the current market conditions, pricing strategies, marketing plans, and the overall selling process to build trust and confidence. Yeah, um, Prospects Plus is great for this. They have probably now, I would say, over 50 direct response reports on their site. Every Sunday, if you are on their marketing mailing list, they give away one free direct response report. It's a $20 value. You can download it for free. They give a promo code. And um, this is a great educational tool. You can, in your direct mail, you can offer it as a free offer that they have to text you or call you or use a QR code to get the free report. And it's, it's educational nature. It's something that is trending or timely in the news that they would want to learn about. You can put those in your listing presentation, the reports. You can put them on your website as an opt-in for an email. You can share them on social media, DM me for a copy of this. So you don't actually have to worry about writing those tools yourself. Go to Prospects Plus. They've got every possible topic for home buyers, home sellers, homeowners, FISBOs. I mean, you name it, they've got a topic on it. Absolutely. And um, they're wonderfully written by industry experts and they really break it down in a simple way for consumers. All right. Moving on, how about your overall game enhancement? Our final topic for today's show. Number one, networking. Expand professional networks by attending industry events, joining real estate associations, and building relationships with other professionals in related fields. You know, I think right now is a time where you really want to look at who's, uh, you know, do you ever hear the saying, you're the sum of the six to eight people around yes. you? So mm -hmm. I think right now, especially with what's going on with the discussions on the NAR settlement, et cetera, be really careful of who those six to eight people are around you. Are they people that are uplifted and are excited about the future? Are they people that are burying their head in the sand, uh, feeling depressed and dramatizing and speaking negatively about what's going on? Be really aware of that and network with people that lift you up and that you can lift up to keep you keep blinders on away from the crap. Right. And the minutia yep. and yep. keep you on the right path. Absolutely. You got to stick yep. stick around positive people. You want yep. positive influences around you. Number the two. Thing I like about. Sorry, oh, Todd, go ahead. I just want to add about networking. Two things happen there in my mind. Um, you can make that fun. Mm -hmm. You can make that fun because there's a lot of events. But number two, <laughs> you, you're going to meet the heavy hitters in mm -hmm. your town or in your board. And you're going to see how you stack up to them. And you're going to realize, okay. I need to get better at my game because these guys are killing it. So networking right. is going to excite you in that respect as well. I agree. I mean, everybody has their ceiling, that point right. where they feel like, oh, I've reached it. I'm done. And then you, you look, if you have the ability to really look around and view this landscape, you realize, oh, my gosh, I'm not even halfway there compared to what, what they're doing compared to what I'm doing. I have a whole new reach that I can go after that I didn't even see on the horizon. I, I totally agree, Todd. That's such a great yeah. point. Excellent. All right. Well, topic number two, technology <laughs> adoption. Embrace technological tools and platforms to streamline processes, enhance marketing efforts, and improve your client communication. Yep. Okay, good. Number well three. Said. Well said. <laughs> what else can right. you say? Client relationship management. That's number three. Implement robust client relationship management systems to maintain contact with past clients, generate referrals, and foster long-term relationships. You know, I know agents probably get tired of hearing about this. I'd say anybody in the sales room probably gets tired of hearing about um, CRMs, 
<laughs> but if you are a growing business, you cannot be everything everywhere at all times. So if you don't start adopting tools that help make your life more efficient, whether they're some type of um, project management tools, CRM tools, uh, AI, there's a ton of AI tools that help with organization, you will not grow because there are only so many hours in the day. If you do not find more efficient ways to do things, you're, you're just screwed. You're going to top out. So a, a robust CRM that does a lot of the work for you. And again, I would say with AI now, the, they're going to go to a whole new level, these CRMs mm -hmm. and what they're capable right. of doing, it, especially interacting and engaging. There's gonna, there will be a point where they will be out touching. You will be able to set these CRMs to touch your clients without you even being involved because they will know the way you communicate so well. So get start getting involved in these. Start uploading people to these. They, it will make a difference in your life. It will make you one of you turn into 20 of you if you do this right. We could start having AI do this show. Well said. Right? Yes. And then Yes, I like that idea. Hi, I'm Jim, and this is Todd, and this is Lisa. I want we an AI Lisa. Giving away a hundred dollars. I want an AI Lisa. <laughs> nice. That'll be that'll be the day when we have AI Lisa. All right, number four, can feedback guys, loop. Can you guys check your check your cameras? Make sure they're still on. I don't see you on here, although it's recording. You don't see us anymore. Nope. But it says recording, and I can hear you. But everything's hmm. gone. I, I see the black screen. Well, that's not good. The black screen of death. Hmm. Well, I is, think we're still on. So as, as long as it's okay on your end, I'm good. Yes, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. We we're having connectivity issues or something, but all right. Okay. Yeah. It's still saying well, recording. Okay. Point, point um, number next. Okay. Yeah. Number feedback four. Loop, yeah. Yes. Feedback loop. Seek feedback. <clears throat> number four. Feedback loop. <laughs> You okay over there? <laughs> yes, I'm fine. Just All something right. in my throat there. Yes. Seek feedback from clients, colleagues, and mentors to identify areas for improvement and continuously refine skills and strategies. I think this is really hard. I love that one because yeah, watch, pe people don't like that. They're scared. They're, yeah. you know, they don't want to be judged, but the strong agents will go to the top people in their office and say, let me give my listing presentation to you. Give me some feedback. Interrupt mm -hmm. me. Stop me. Let's do this once a day. Go to your broker. That costs you no money, and that feedback loop will make you strong, will make you right. strong to get excited to do things most people don't want to do. I agree. That's well said. I can't say that any better. All right. And finally, number five, personal branding. Invest in personal branding efforts to establish a unique identity, differentiate from competition, and position yourself as a trusted real estate expert okay. in the market. Yep. Yep. And we kind of... Uh, flew through those, but yep. those are really some great topics. There's five each between negotiation skills enhancement, listing presentation skills enhancement, and your overall game enhancements that uh, we have for you. And I'm sure those are in the notes somewhere, right? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Get a, get on it. Nice. Write a couple of these down and uh, and get out there and start doing it. Ex you know exactly. Get, yep. Get re inspired. Get excited. That'll help you go from good to great. Speaking of some great things, Todd. Any idea what's coming up here? Hey, look at this. It's our favorite part of the show here, where we have a postcard <laughs> from ProspectsPlus.com. What should we? That do? one. This one here. Yes. All right. Ah, uh, that's a fine one. Oh, the uh, she has yeah. many properties on All this right. one here she's a go-getter she is let's call 856-912-2973 this is michaela i think i'm pronouncing that correctly michaela my c-h-a-e-l-a michaela i don't know we'll see well my name's jim i'm with the take a listening today podcast i'm calling on behalf of prospectsplus.com you recently mailed out a postcard with that fine company. It looks like uh, you're showing off a few of your listings on it. Yeah. Well, we're calling to uh, ask you about your mailing. And uh, towards the end of our conversation here, we want to give you a chance to win a gift card for prospectsplus.com. Sound good? Oh, well, just tell us about your campaign that you just sent out. It uh, looks beautiful. Turned out really nice. Was that a one-time mailing or did you do a couple mailings of that? Oh, no, I've done several mailings over okay. the past few months with you. Okay, looks great. And where's the mailing list coming from? Thank Is it like a, like a farm area, or are you doing a targeted mailing list? 
Um, that, I, I do a couple different ones. Every month, I mail to about 200 of my previous customers. Did you win? Uh, so, the recent, so the most recent postcard that I just did to some of my previous, or to, you know, my past customers. And then I also do just sold postcards around my listings. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, Michaela, we would love to give you an opportunity to win a $100 gift card on almost anything on prospectsplus.com. We have a quiz. And what we do is we ask you three questions, or one question, give you three opportunities to uh, choose from as an to answer. Get it wrong. Yep, to get it, to get it right. Well, that's not the right, right attitude. To Wait get a minute. It right. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, I'm excited. All right. There we go. There we go. We're excited. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for explaining that. So what's the question? Okay. All right. Here is your question. What year did Saturday Night Live begin? Oh, gee. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Well, let me Google that. I'm going to tell you. I used to watch Saturday Night Live when I was a little girl. Oh, I mean, so I did, too. To be 19, I mean, I was born in 1969. I remember as a little girl, I would watch that. So it has to be in the very early 70s, because I could be wrong. But as I'm in my car at the stop sign, I'm going to <laughs> Google that, if you don't mind, because I'm what a smart person would do these days. That, that is what a smart person uh, would do. What are the options, okay. Jim? But I haven't even given you the options yet, so it's either... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. A, 1973, B, 1975, okay. or C, 1977. So 73, well, 75, or 77. Yes. I'm wondering if 75, I'm thinking the same thing. I watched it as a kid, too. I'm wondering if 75 yeah, oh. might be the year. Um, hold on, hold on. That was way oh, before my time, so you know, I, I can't tell it you. It was so good back then, too. Oh my gosh, that's when um, oh, yeah, was. Gilda Radner was Gilda on, Radner. John yeah. Belushi, Chevy Chase, uh, Jane Curtin. Um, I'm trying to yeah. think of some of the other cast back then. Dan Aykroyd was on. Bill Murray was uh, on. Bill Murray. It's, 70, it's 1975. 75, okay. Your guess is 75. I, it's correct, sir. <laughs> look, I'll I'll be the one that says if it's correct or not. Okay. You you you, you sound you sound you sound very good. You definitely you definitely gonna have your own show. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Is that correct? Yes, yes it's correct. Look at that. Of course. Of course. Lisa, what did we win today? Well, Michaela wins a hundred dollar gift card on Prospects Plus. I'm gonna email you the code for that. You'll get it within twenty four hours. And a bunch of Prospects Plus swag. Thank you so much for being on the show, and we wish you the best of luck out there. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. I'm very excited. Thank you. You have a wonderful day, Michaela. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. A winner every time. Awesome. Todd, are you still there? <laughs> Did our satellite no, have some I think, issues? I think we lost him. That was actually really funny. <laughs> like, we barely <laughs> talked to her, and he goes, did she win? <laughs> that was good. I, I, I think, we I think we're him. having some communications issues with Todd yes. right now. So he doesn't matter. He's meditating. <laughs> he's he's meditating. done a quick meditation. I mean, he's still moving, so I know our, our, he's alive. our, feed, our feed is working. He's alive. Back. Well, well, she warmed right up, didn't she? I yeah, mean, when she, she found out. Oh, wait. Prospects yeah. Plus. Okay. I have oh. to Google that, though. Wait till a stop sign. That's right. pretty funny. That was she funny. was insistent. It was going to happen. All right. Uh, there we go. We learned all about uh, being from good to great. Tips to boost your listing, presentation, and negotiation game. Yep. Lisa, anything else? No, that's it. Just get out there. Keep in a good frame of mind. Keep in a good attitude. Keep yourself surrounded by people that also have a good attitude. Stay away from the ones. If somebody wants to go to lunch with you to complain about the current state of things, run in the other direction. No, thank you. Run in the other direction. Exactly. Todd, anything? <laughs> He's silent. He has nothing left to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's waving. He's waving. Up. Maybe he can Thumbs hear up. us. Okay. Thumbs up. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye.